Tourism in the Carteret County town of Beaufort is changing the economy of this traditional fishing community. Environmental experts say the water quality of the nearby estuary is changing too. Tonight in the first of a three-part series, Dr. Tom Linden shows us how the town is grappling with the balance between traditional fishing, economic growth, and the health of its coastal waters. North Carolina's network of estuaries cover an area larger than Delaware. The waters go from Currituck Banks in the northeast to Cape Fear just south of Wilmington. Estuaries are where freshwater rivers meet the salty ocean. They support a complex ecosystem that's home to abundant wildlife and seafood industries like clamming, for example. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, reports 90% of commercial seafood species caught in North Carolina spend at least part of their lives in the estuaries. Many fish, like these Atlantic menhaden, grow and develop here. Commercial processors catch menhaden and turn them into fish meal and oil. From the 1920s to the 1960s, the menhaden industry provided thousands of jobs in Beaufort. Crews used muscle power to hoist huge schools of menhaden into purse nets. The menhaden chantymen of Beaufort sang of an earlier era before hydraulic winches and lifters mechanized the fishing operation. As many as seven menhaden plants operated in Beaufort at one time. Now, only one menhaden fishery remains in North Carolina. Beaufort Fisheries president and general manager, Jewel Wheatley, has worked in the factory since the 1970s. Menhaden was king then. I mean, if it wasn't for Menhaden, Carter County would be like it is today. There was no other industry. But this once thriving industry is dwindling. The North Carolina Department of Environment and Natural Resources reports fishermen caught six times more Menhaden in 1981 than in 2004. And these are what you'd call typical, uh, quote, summertime fish. NOAA biologist Joseph Smith tracks the Menhaden fishery. He says coastal development encroaches on traditional fishing. You can go to the factory and you can see how coastal development has, has started to impinge on the factory. The, the townhouses go up within 100 yards of the fish factory now, whereas before there, there used to be a buffer zone. This 1978 photograph shows little development along the estuary. This same view in 2000 shows more piers and homes near the waterfront. The U.S. Census reports from 1980 to 2000, the Carteret County population grew by almost 50 percent. NOAA scientist Carolyn Curran says population growth and land development put pressure on the environment. Any one person, the way I use the water, the way you use the water, our impact is very small. But there's so many of us making a small impact that we're really causing a decline in both habitat loss and decline in water quality. Local marine scientists say land around Beaufort fisheries is more valuable for development than traditional commercial fishing. The Carteret County Economic Development Council reports since 1990, tourism revenue has nearly doubled. Beaufort developer and builder Pat Joyce says the area has come alive in the last 20 years. Joyce has turned an old ice fishing plant and train depot into million dollar homes along the Beaufort waterfront. He says construction is a positive economic force. People will argue with me that, but I personally think development is good. But others, like North Carolina Coastal Federation coast keeper Frank Tersey, say development in Carteret County is mirroring growth of northern states like New Jersey. What you see here. Everything is legal. Everything that was done there is absolutely legal, and everything, everything over there is polluting this water with bacteria. The Environmental Protection Agency calls stormwater runoff a leading cause of water quality problems. After a rainstorm, water seeps into the ground, but when land is paved, rainwater can't seep through, so runoff carries chemicals and other debris to the nearest body of water. In 2000, the Coastal Area Management Act 
mandated a 30-foot buffer between the shoreline and the nearest development. That buffer slows runoff before reaching the estuary. And these buffer zones will help. It's a plus. I'm not totally against it. It kind of impacts you on the development side, but it's, it's not a bad thing. However, environmentalists like Tersey say the buffer zones are too small to protect estuaries. It's fairly meaningless for water quality purposes. 30 feet, that's not even good for wildlife habitat. 30 feet certainly doesn't buffer the water from anything. Tersey says North Carolina has yet to find a balance between development and protecting the state's estuaries, which support a struggling oyster industry. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources reports more than 350,000 acres in North Carolina have been closed to shellfishing because of bacterial contamination. It has always been the, the, the feeling that you can have economic development and still protect um, the environment. We have not done that in North Carolina. Whatever that balance is, we haven't found it yet. In addition to Pat Joyce, we contacted several other developers and realty companies in Carteret County to get their thoughts on the balance between development and the environment. We were unable to get an interview with them. Dave Insco, executive director of the Carteret County Economic Development Council, provided us with this statement. We recognize the needs of nature, but we must always remember that people have a right to use their land to enjoy nature, make a living, and support their families. Developers and environmentalists agree community leaders need to plan for Beaufort's growing population, but they disagree on where to draw the line between economic growth and environmental protection. Tomorrow we'll present the second in our three-part series on restoring threatened habitat in our state's estuaries. This series was produced in partnership with the UNC at Chapel Hill School of Journalism and Mass Communication. The production team included Katrina Chimalecki, Molly Davis, and Lynn Thomason.